Hello, I'm Richard, and this is the third episode in a series in which I pull records from my shelves to show. Today, I have included some 70s UK blues rock, post-punk, reggae, and classic 70s UK hard rock. I would mention that all of the albums I am showing can be bought for £10 or less in the UK. First up is this album by Julia Fordham. She's a British singer-songwriter, born near Portsmouth, Hampshire, now based in California. Her professional career started in the 1980s as a backing singer. This is her first solo album, self-titled, released in 1988 on Circa Records. It reached number 20 in the UK album charts, and the song Happy Ever After was a minor charting single. She has a very distinctive voice, and on this album there is a jazzy, soulful pop style. Her singing reminds me a little of Annie Lennox. This is an album copy with an extra 12 inch, comprising of six live tracks. John Hyatt, album titled Bring the Family, released in 1987 on Demon Records. John is an American singer-songwriter with a long recording and performing career, although perhaps not quite so well known in the UK. This is his eighth studio album and was his first ch to chart in the Billboard 200. The album was recorded in four days and featured musicians including Rai Kuda and Nick Lowe. The musical style is Heartland Rock Americana. Memphis in the Meantime and Thank You Girl are the standout songs on this album. They have both been covered by other artists. Medicine Head, album titled Through a Five, released in 1974 on Polydor Records. They were a British blues rock band active in the 1970s and recorded six original albums. Their biggest single success was in 1973 with One and One is One, which reached number three on the UK singles chart. The group was a duo for most of its career. John Fiddler and Peter Hope Evans augmented with other musicians, including Keith Ralph, Tony Ashton and Morgan Fisher, not the Hoople. This was their fifth album release and it included the UK chart singles Rising Sun and Slip and Slide. Despite constant touring, often as a supporting act, they failed to place an album on the UK chart. They finally folded in 1977. The Wild Flowers, album title Sometime Soon, released in 1988 on Chapter 22 label. They were a UK band formed in 1983 and released five albums between 1984 and 1997. They were the first British band signed to US punk rock label Slash Records. This album was released on that, album, that label in the US. The music is post-punk alt-rock. I can hear influences of The Clash, and musically, the style is a little reminiscent of U2. Westworld, album titled Where the Action Is, released in 1987 on RCA Records. Westworld were a British-based band formed in 1986 by former Generation X guitarist Bob Andrews and American vocalist Elizabeth Westwood. Visually, the band was styled reminiscent of comic book art and musically were a blend of 50s rock and roll, glam and punk, updated with beatboxes. Their debut single, Sonic Boom Boy, reached number 11 in the UK singles chart in 1987 and followed up with minor chart hits also on this album, Banana and Silverman. They released two further albums, 
1988 and 1991 to very modest success and they moved to the US in 1992, returning to the UK in 1994 to become the, a band named Moondog, which was an experimental electronic pop rock act. Chuck Fender, The Living Fire, released in 2007 on the Greensleeves label. Real name was Sean Whitehead, He's an American Jamaican musician and DJ. Born in Brooklyn, raised in Jamaica. He has released five studio albums, the most recent in 2013. This is his second album. His songwriting is known for its hard hitting social conscious lyrics. Lone Star, album titled Firing on All Six, released in 1977 on CBS Records. The band formed in Cardiff, Wales in 1975 and released their first self-titled album in 1976. This is their second and only other official studio album release. They split up in 1978, citing management and band member interpersonal issues. The guitarist, was the late Paul Tonka Chapman, who went on to play with UFO from 1978 to 1983. The original vocalist on the first album was replaced by John Sloman, who was only 20 in 1977, for this album. I think he has an incredible voice and a stage presence styled on a young Robert Plant. He went on to sing with Uriah Heep from 1979 to 1981. This album only reached number 36 in the UK album charts. I think it's an overlooked classic of hard rock, progressive rock. A notable track is Bells of Berlin. I think having been released in 1977, the band and this album were largely overlooked due to the punk explosion and the record company considered the band and their musical style at that point to be old-fashioned. If you're into UFO or Uriah Heep, essential listening this album. Okay, finally, in my last video, I went through three auction lots that I'd recently picked up at an auction house. And I mentioned that one of the albums I was keeping for my own collection was Craftwork Trans Europe Express. So I recently took the album out of its sleeve to give it a clean, and from the sleeve out fell a seven inch single, Showroom Dummies. So I thought, very nice, little bonus. And even better, when I took the record out of its paper sleeve, I saw it was a demo. Nice bonus. Thank you very much.